What's going on, y'all? Brother Doug here. Comic Con has just wrapped. Well, it wraps tomorrow, Sunday. Unless you're watching this video today, Sunday. Either way, Comic Con is officially over for the studios, the movie studios, and some of the important news that I wanted to tackle. So, without further ado, let's cut small talk, move forward. Nickelodeon released a press release saying that they're not going to release the last five episodes of Korra due to the leaks and some other rumors that have gone on. Like, it leaves one person to fuck it up for everybody. I'm like, what? Because of the leaks and also the ratings are low. Nobody's watching it. I'm going to get to why in a minute, but they're moving it to Nick.com. They want to release it digital. I love watching videos, obviously, because I'm making them, and you guys love watching videos too, but, you know, there's a different purpose for a computer and for a television, and so, you know, there's definitely a, a huge difference between the two, but sometimes the two can merge and do the same quality. But I don't know, just for, that's just me. Just like a, a difference between a digital book and a physical book. You know, I love touching paper. You know, I just love physically turning the page. I don't want to, you know, just swipe my hand on the screen to... I don't know, that's just me. I mean, some people might... Whatever floats your boat. All right, so now back to the ratings thing. Why release it on a Friday? Remember it used to come on Saturday mornings? And it used to come on Fridays during the fall, you know, when kids are, you know, in school, the summer. How many kids, you know, are, are sitting down watching TV during Friday? Now they out and about, they out partying with their friends, people are out, you know, at the movies, the club. I remember somebody joking on the article saying that maybe uh, Stuart Snyder is uh, is now the head president of Nickelodeon. Now, for those who don't know, Stuart Snyder he used to be uh, the Cartoon Network executive, and he's the reason why we don't have Young Justice anymore. Do the math on that. But as Cora as a whole for book three, big, book three definitely kicks book two's ass. I didn't really like book two. Just because I didn't really like the spirit world, I didn't really like Cora's motive or attitude on that season. But this season, most definitely, it's always the I man. It's always the book threes that are awesome. Remember on the first series, uh, you know, Aang's journey. I love book three, Fire, and this one I love, uh, Change, because you know it's definitely dealing with sub bending. You know, you got the villains who can you know mind bend, who can you know blood bend, of course, and lava bend, and uh, what else? You know, metal. Of course, metal bending, but you know a lot of sub movements, the sub bending. So this season definitely kicking ass. On to the next subject. Now, while on my breaks at work, you know, I'm scrolling down people's timelines, you know, people who are at Comic-Con. You know, I'm not hating over here. You know, maybe next year will be my year. So while I'm scrolling, I'm like, oh, oh, man. I see a picture of Tetsuya Nomura and Hideo Kojima. For those who don't know those two, Nomura is the creator, director, writer, all-around guy behind Kingdom Hearts, uh, Final Fantasy. Hideo Kojima, you know, the, the man behind Metal Gear Solid. So I'm like, oh, man, I wish I was there this year, but, you know. Maybe next year. All right. So, anyways, Tatooine and the Mayor was there uh, because DC solicited a few artists to help celebrate Batman's 75th anniversary, and so he drew an awesome Batman uh, characterization, uh, and I, I thought it was pretty dope. It reminded me of the armor that Vin, Aqua, and Terra use in Birth by Sleep, Kingdom Hearts. You know that kind of armor, and that's his style. You know, sharp, pointy armor, belt, zippers. To Tatooine and the Mayor's style. You know, I'm a big fan, so. I thought that was pretty cool. All right, so the next piece of news has to do something with Power Rangers and Super Sentai. So they released uh, the action figures and the uh, Dino Charge uh, parallel, you know, just little toys in general for next year's season. And you know, I'm not really interested in that. Remember, I told you a long time ago. You know, I'm a grown man. I don't really play with toys like that. But the only thing I want to hear about uh, Kiru, sorry, Power Rangers Dino Charge, is Asian Red and Black Pink. Other than that, I don't really care. So, on to Super Sentai news, uh, Shout Factory said that they're releasing Zhu Ranger to the States. Huh. It is kind of a coin toss situation, you know, uh, you can watch it for free online, I don't know why you're going to pay 20 to $30 for something you can watch online for free. You, you know what I mean? I mean, I mean, I've seen all the Sentais, correction, I've seen all the pre ju the post ju Sentai, I've seen Zhu Ranger and everything that came after I seen Jetman. It was overrated. Uh, I mean, if you guys want to buy it, I mean, that, that's definitely up your leisure. But uh, I, it, it's crazy that you know stuff, something that's supposed to be Japan-driven, is being released here. You know, I mean, it, it would be dope if kids can learn what Super Sentai sprung off from Power Rangers. But you know, since you know we took their footage and incorporated it to our you know movement, but it's funny because. Last year, I forgot to post a picture on Facebook. I, I was walking through Toys R Us strolling, and I seen a few Japanese toys, like the Shinken-O, Shinken and uh, 
you know, just a lot of uh, 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 Shinkinger toys straight imported from Japan. I'm like, the hell? The next story. Uh, so Marvel released uh, a few titles from Star Wars next year since they lose since Dark Horse loses the rights this year. Uh, Marvel's going to start releasing Star Wars comics next year. And I'm not really big on Star Wars comics like that. You know, I read Star Wars books, you know, the novels and whatnot. But I read, like, like a few little Star Wars legacy graphic novels here and there. You know, I, I rent them from, like, the library or something, but... That's just it, and especially since the uh, expanded universe isn't going to be canon to the movies now, so it's like, you know, why even bother? And now for the big finishers, the big two, DC and Marvel. So, let's get started with DC, since they did come first. DC came hard. I think they, I thought they won today. I'm over here jumping to conclusions, and I'll tell you why, because, you know, they they did uh, do what I expected. They they didn't bring out the entire dress of the cash, but they brought out the main DC Trinity, you know, Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot. Zack Snyder came out too. Apparently on the footage it has Batman, you know, looking up uh, up to the sky through the bat signal to see Superman. Superman's getting ready to do a heat vision attack. And Batman has, you know, the white exoskeleton eyes, you know, the ones we see from the comics and cartoons throughout all the years, like, finally. They did it once on, uh, The Dark Knight, remember? When, uh, at the end, he was fighting Joker in the building, and it was messing up, and if you've seen Dark Knight, you know what I'm talking about, that scene, that particular scene. But, you know, to see it fully realized here, and people saying that they're going through, they're, uh, basing the movie off of The Dark Knight Returns. And a couple. So when they released Ben Affleck's cow, you know, a few days ago during Comic-Con, you know, on the show floor of the exhibit hall, you know, they had to hit, you know, the cape and cow, and it looked, I don't know, it looked kind of tight in the neck. And, you know, I'm a big safety freak. You know, I'm a safety has a person. Uh, can he move his neck? Does he have to turn like he crippled? Just, you know, uh, that's just me. But, you know, is it flexible? That, that, that's my question. A lot of people are complaining about Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot, whatever her last name is, uh, costume, Wonder Woman costume. Like, really? Come on, man. I mean, I don't have no problem with it, you know. Uh... Either way, as long as Wonder Woman's kicking ass, I don't care. She could wear a thong, and I wouldn't care. But really, it could have been worse. She could have been wearing this. But she didn't. So I thought DC lived up to their expectations. But let me tell you who didn't live up to their expectations. Marvel. Um, you know, last week, or the beginning of the week, I'm not sure, uh, Marvel released um, an article saying that they have many release dates all the way through 2018 and 2019. I'm not sure one of those two dates, but they had like a like a whole list of untitled movies. So I was thinking, okay, they're releasing this before San Diego Comic Con. I, I can get that. We're probably gonna have a big announcement today. The only thing they announced today was that on July 28th, 2017, we get Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and the first movie comes out next week. And I'm not hearing really good things about it. I mean, I'm hearing mixed reviews. I'm hearing some people saying that it's awesome. Some people saying that it's, yeah, it's kind of meh. Like, save your money or wait for it on Redbox or on Stars or something. But, you know, I'm reserving judgment on all these movies now. So, what, what was shown was Ant-Man, who's my least favorite superhero. I mean, think about it. The movie hasn't even started filming. And cast members are already leaving or dropping out. You know, I heard about Patrick Wilson and two other men. And Edgar Wright got fired. So it turns out Evangeline Lilly is playing uh, Hope Hope, Hope uh, Van Dyne or Hope Pym. Hank Pym's daughter played by Michael Douglas. And Corey, I forget his name, is playing uh, Yellow Jacket. And the thing is, how come all these Marvel movies, the villains always turn out to be anti-heroes? Because, you know, Cars Bones, sometimes he's a villain, sometimes he's a hero. Winter Soldier, Loki... Uh, the Yellow Jacket, because Yellow Jacket, you know, he's a villain, but then he turns into a good guy later on in the series. Because I have the New Avengers books written by Brian Michael Bendis, uh, one through twelve, volumes one through twelve, and he was part of the Avengers, obviously. Speaking of the Avengers, uh, let's move on to Age of Ultron. So I heard that uh, the cast came out dancing to Michael. You know, they always get a plus if you play Michael. You guys know a big Michael fan. You know, playing that don't stop till you get enough. But uh, the footage shown. You know, of course, I'm not going to hate on Avengers. You know, I'm ready for that movie next year. That and Jurassic World, Star Wars 7, a whole bunch of movies coming out next year. Uh, but my, my disappointment was just that, you know, Marvel had this whole slate of movies through 2019, and only one was announced, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. That's just my frustration. I mean, I expected a Black Panther. I mean, they already got rumors that Joaquin Phoenix is going to play Doctor Strange. You know, they got teases for the Inhumans through the comics. I mean, come on, Marvel. Y'all could have stepped it up. So... In my honest opinion, DC won this bitch today.
That's just me. Now, unless Black Panther shows up in Captain America 3 or on the after credit scene in Avengers 2, or maybe even Ant-Man, I don't know, uh, then I will be seeing Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice first come May 2016. So with all my ranting and raving, what was your Comic-Con highlight this weekend? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you like the video, share the video, subscribe, comment, like me on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, like always, deuces.